A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large number of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp with the ten-string lyre. Chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right of the kindness of the Lord. The earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and went across the sea to Capernaum. It had already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they began to be afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat, but the boat immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The account of Jesus walking on the sea, it's in all of the Gospels. Uh, this isn't the case for every miracle and parable, as you know. In John's Gospel, uh, which is what we're reading from this morning, um, as I've said before, is a more theological gospel, if you will. Not to denigrate the others, but it's very different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's why Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptics. You put them side by side, the three texts, and you see the parallels. Um, similar uh, similar uh, timeline of events, similar, similar parables, sim similar miracles. John's just like a completely different animal. Uh, you know, John, for instance, doesn't have the... Uh, the institution narrative at the Last Supper, but instead John's got the Bread of Life discourse, which is John chapter 6. Uh, Jesus' uh, ministry in John is three years. The others, it's it's really just one year and, and so forth. Uh, and John also has a long, at the Last Supper, um, the Last Supper discourses, which is like four chapters ending in the high priestly prayer, John 17. So, you could make the case, and I, I'm, I'm not, but um, and don't show this. Hopefully, there are no scripture scholars or John fans because you're gonna you're gonna want to crucify me. But like um, John or synoptic fans, I should say, John, you know, a little higher, a little more elevated. Uh, maybe the uh, the synoptics are a little more basic, a little more dare I say childish or elementary. And so you would think the walking on water account, which is like the the most beloved, you know, scene, memorable scene, especially with, with kids. Uh, they always you know, are able and, you know, second graders and fifth graders, you know, oh, yeah, Jesus walked on water. That's how that's what God does. He walks on water. It's impossible. It's a miracle. You would think John wouldn't include that. Right. Because it's like your coloring book scene of Jesus. But he does. 
he does. Nothing is uh, nothing is too elemental to God, and it seems so primitive. The the analogy, okay, the disciples, the apostles are in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. There's a storm. It's dark. They feel alone. They're frightened. They think they're going to die. Jesus is not there yet, but he comes to them. So we're in the midst of our suffering and our trial, and we think we're going to die, or we think, you know, we're, we're not going to make it. Um, you know, a teenager or a child always thinks their life is over when some, some trial happens. Well, guess what? We can think that way too. And that's, John's almost saying by including this walk in water, that's okay. You never outgrow being afraid afraid of suffering or, or some sort of uh, trial that you undergo. And Jesus might not be there right away, but he's coming to you. But what is unique about this scene of the walking on water and John, which I find fascinating as well, they want him to get into the boat, but we hear the boat had immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. So Jesus actually never gets into their boat, whereas in the synoptics he does. He gets into the boat, rebukes the wind, and, and you know, Things settle down. Well, things settle down, but it's they've already reached the shore, so Jesus never needs to get into the boat. Um, now he 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 does he does a drive by or I guess a walk by, um, but he never actually needs to get in into their uh, their vessel. So sometimes the Lord will come to us uh, in a again dare I say uh, somewhat distant way, and we'll find that our problem has subsided. Or the resolution has already come. Uh, Jesus didn't specifically come in and say, do this or do that. And you know, give us the, the direct consolation. He fixed the problem, just like Jesus calms the, the storm. Uh, but it, it kind of, we got to our destination almost on our own. And that's, that's a sign of our advancement, if you will, or our maturity. Um, God is always with us. God is always doing the work. Uh, but sometimes he takes a hands-off approach, uh, and we will find that our problems are are at an end. Why? To what end? To what's the ultimate point? So that we can give thanks to God. Give thanks to God that he, he loves us and he cares that much about us, and he will always provide for us. Amen.